1957 Topps Football Cards, 10 Most Valuable. If you were a gridiron collector in the 1950s, you had to be pretty stoked and relieved when the 1957 Topps football cards appeared on the scene. After a decade of fits and starts following World War II, it was never a given that there would be any football cards at all. Not considering that Bowman had vanished from the scene between 1955 and 1956, and not considering that no one yet had a good handle on what Topps was all about. But after a colorful, vertical 120-card issue in 1956, Topps busted back into the fall landscape in 1957 with a horizontal format featuring two images of each player, a portrait and an action shot. And the set was humongous by the standards of today, checking in at 154 cards. In retrospect, this issue was also a landmark in the hobby, along with the 1957 Topps baseball set, because it was the first issued in the now standard 2.5 inch by 3.5 inch format. But this set grew even more significant over the years as the first cardboard home to three legendary quarterbacks, Bart Starr, Johnny Unitas, and Paul Horning, who played quarterback in college, as well as a host of other positions, all have rookie cards in this colorful issue. No surprise, then, that those three lead off our list of the 10 most valuable 1957 Topps football cards, as ranked by prices for copies graded in PSA 7, according to the PSA Sports Market Report price guide. 1957 Topps Bart Starr, rookie card, number 119. It took Starr and his Green Bay Packers a few seasons to hit their full stride, but by the time the Packers won the 1961 NFL championship, Starr was a rising quarterback and a star. Four more titles followed, including the first two Super Bowl trophies in 1966 and 1967. And that run of success forever tied star to Vince Lombardi as one of the greatest coach-slash-quarterback combos of all time. Though Starr retired from the NFL in 1971, he never really lost that luster for those great Green Bay Packer teams. And he even returned to Titletown to coach the Pack from 1975 through 1983. The 1957 top star rookie card is a key to the set and one of the hobby's biggest prizes, checking in at around $1,500 in PSA 7 condition. 1957 tops Johnny Unitas rookie card number 138. Unitas got off to a faster start in the NFL than Starr did, leading the Baltimore Colts to a title in 1958, his third season in the league. Johnny U also helped usher in the modern era of quarterback play, unleashing a barrage of passes, yardage, and touchdowns that the league had never before witnessed. In 1957, while this card was still available in live wax packs, Unitas blew the doors off opposing teams to the tune of 2,550 yards and 24 touchdowns. Three years later, he'd become the first signal caller to pass for more than 3,000 yards in a season. By then, the Colts had two titles under their belts, and Unitas was a legend. Today, his rookie card pushes two grand in graded near mint condition. 1957 Tops Paul Horning, rookie card number 151. Horning could pretty much do anything on the football field, and he played just about everywhere at Notre Dame en route to the 1956 Heisman Trophy. With the Packers, Horning narrowed his focus to running, catching, and returning the ball for the most part and quickly developed into one of the pack's most versatile weapons as they set about building their dynasty. Horning's career was relatively short at eight seasons over nine years, but that was enough to help Green Bay win three titles and to punch Horning's Canton ticket. The Hall of Famer's rookie card sells for more than $500 in slab seven condition these days. 1957 Tops Raymond Berry rookie card, number 94. By the time Barry's 1957 Topps rookie card found its way into collector's hands, the end from SMU had established himself as Unitas' favorite target, though halfback Lenny Moore combined for well over a 1,000 yards that season. In his 13-year career, all with Baltimore, Barry led the NFL in receiving yards three times and helped the Colts to those two titles in 1958 and 1959. He finished his run in 1967 with nearly 9,300 yards and 68 touchdowns, a resume that landed him a bust in Canton in 1973, and also a rookie card that hauls in $300 or more in PSA 7. 1957 Tops Fred Morrison, number 154. The life of an NFL running back is a punishing one, and you often hear the old rub that about at age 30 is pretty much the limit for most mere mortals toiling at the position. 
and it's possible that Fred Morrison was the original exemplar of that rule of thumb. From 1950 through 1956, Morrison racked up 2,400 plus yards and 578 carries for the Chicago Bears and the Cleveland Browns before hanging up his cleats. Yes, he was 30 years old. Still, as a pro bowler, 1955, who started for two of the NFL's staple franchises in the 1950s, Morrison maintained a certain degree of popularity after he stopped playing, partly because he stayed in the game in a variety of executive capacities. Today, his first football card fetches in the neighborhood of $100 when graded in near mint condition. 1957 Tops Night Train Lane, Ricky Card, number 85. Dick, Night Train Lane story reads like a movie script. A standout high school athlete, basketball and football, who played briefly in the baseball's Negro Leagues, Lane then started on the gridiron at Scott's Bluff Junior College before enlisting in the Army. He made his mark on the football field during four years of service, too, named to all Army squads in 1949, second team, and 1951, first team. After his discharge, Lane worked at a Los Angeles aircraft plant, where his bus route took him past the Rams' offices. A drop by in 1952 led to a tryout and a contract. That fall, at age 24, Night Train Lane lined up at defensive end and intercepted 14 opposing passes in just 12 games, a record that still stands today. And that was just the beginning, as Lane picked off 68 passes in a 14-year career with the Rams, Chicago Cardinals, and Detroit Lions. Unbelievably, that's a total that still ranks fourth all-time going on six decades later. Thanks to the sporadic nature of football card market when he debuted, Lane's rookie card didn't come until 1957. Today, that first night train card will set you back about $100 in PSA 7. 1957 tops Earl Morrill, rookie card number 104. It took Morrill three stops before he really got his feet under him in the NFL, with trades after the 1957 and 1958 season, sending him from the San Francisco 49ers to the Pittsburgh Steelers to the Detroit Lions. Six years in Motown were followed by three with the New York Giants, before Morrill landed with the Colts in 1968. That season, filling in for an injured Unitas, Morrill led Baltimore to a Super Bowl three, where they lost to Joe Namath and the New York Jets. After backing up Johnny Yu during the Colts' championship run in 1970, Morrill resumed his role of super sub when he took over for the injured Bob Greasy and helped lead the 1972 Miami Dolphins to the game's only perfect season. Morrill stayed with the Finns through 1976 when he finally retired at age 42. With all the high-profile work he did during his career, it's little wonder Morrill's rookie card checks in here about $100 in graded near-mint condition. 1957 Tops Tom McDonald's Rookie Card, number 124. Tommy McDonald had a nose for the end zone, scoring 84 touchdowns during his 12 year NFL career that included stops with the Philadelphia Eagles, Dallas Cowboys, LA Rams, Atlanta Falcons, and the Cleveland Browns. When he retired in 1969, that tally ranked second all time among NFL receivers. A six-time Pro Bowler, McDonald was part of the Phillies' 1950 championship team and was elected to the Hall of Fame in 1998. Today, his 1957 Topps rookie card trades close to $100 in graded near-mint condition. 1957 Topps Leon Hart, number 118. Leon Hart had a head start on NFL fame by winning the Heisman Trophy at Notre Dame in 1949. With the Detroit Lions, Hart did a little bit of almost everything, catching the ball, running the ball, and playing defensive end. His versatility helped the Lions win three titles during his eight seasons in Detroit, including 1957, his final campaign. Hart's final football card sells for around $75 plus in slab near mint condition most of the time. 1957 tops, Zeke Brakowski, number 140. The last quarterback on our list, Brakowski won three titles as backup with the Packers from 1965 through 1967 after serving as a starter with the Chicago Bears and the Los Angeles Rams earlier in his career. After he hung up his cleats in 1968, Brakowski began a long coaching career but suited up for the Packs again in 1971 as an emergency backup. Two years after that, the Bears activated Brakowski for eight games, but he never took the field. Zeke's son, Bob, spent several seasons as an assistant coach in the NFL from the 1990s through the 2010. 
These days, Zeke Berkowski's 1957 Topps football card usually sells for more than $50 in PSA 7 condition.